Teams types and permissions. There are three different types of teams. There are three different levels of permissions within the team. I want to set your organization up for success by understanding Teams types and permissions. Hi, I'm Nate with MyTech Partners. Welcome to an episode of MyTech Briefs. Today we are covering Teams types and permissions. Again, we're going to cover the three different types of teams. We're going to cover and review the different permission levels within a team and who can change access of those different permission levels. And we're going to ensure that you have appropriate access to resources by understanding teams types and permissions. Before we dig into the content, here is an honorable mention of our mug sponsor. You're on mute. Now let's get started with exploring teams, types, and permissions. The three types of teams and three types of permissions within a team is what we're going to cover today. Let's start with the three types of teams. First of all, Microsoft by default makes it so that anyone in the organization can create a team. While we do recommend turning that off and restricting that to only a selected few, I do believe it's important that you understand the different types of teams because an owner of a team, which we'll talk about the types of permissions, has the ability to change the type of team even after it's created. So let's start by looking at the screen. Um, not everyone is gonna even have the ability to uh, execute this, as I mentioned, but by default, Microsoft does turn this on. So down at the bottom, when you're in the uh, Teams section of Teams, you can hit Join or Create a Team. And then you hit Create Team for the sake of this conversation. Uh, and I am going to, again, you can build templates and there's other things you can do to copy existing teams, but I'm gonna build it from scratch. And once you uh, select from scratch or uh, create this team in this uh, area of teams, there, this illustrates the three different types of teams. So there's private, public, and organization-wide. Uh, private is people need permission to join, means someone uh, needs to invite them or ask them to join in order to get access and grant them permission to join. Uh, public is anyone in your organization can choose to join, so I could go find a team that's available and just opt in without anyone having to grant me permission. Uh, and the last one is an org-wide, which means that everyone in your organization is automatically joined. So that whenever you add someone to your team, uh, they will automatically be part of say an all company uh, team, for example. So that way you don't have to take the extra step of when you add them uh, to the organization as a new, per as a new team member, uh, you don't also have to then add them to the organization-wide teams. By the mere fact of creating an organization-wide team, they are automatically added. So uh, why is this important? And one of the things I do like to illustrate is there's other areas of teams when you create structure, you can't go back. Once you create it, you can't. But here, you actually can change the type of team after the fact. Uh, so I'll illustrate that. Um, one of the organizations we worked with at one point uh, had actually had noticed that someone had joined their team that shouldn't be on their team. Uh, and that was because they had the incorrect team type selected. I know this gets a little complicated, uh, but they had the uh, public team type as opposed to the private team type selected so that someone found the team and opted to join the team even though they, uh, that's not the type of team that they wanted. Okay, so the question then is, well, how do you know who's a member of this team? So I will just illustrate, I'll go to the operations team uh, and you can click on the breadcrumbs. There's really two ways in which you can see uh, what type of team uh, you are on and, and be able to change it. Uh, not the team you're on, but the type of team the team is. Uh, trying to be very clear with my language. Uh, you can uh, click on the breadcrumbs next to a team and you can click edit team. This will give you the ability to see the team name, uh, the description, and it also tells you uh, what kind of team it is. And this is where if you happen to have it public, you could change it private. If you have it private and you want to make it public or org wide, this is where you can make that change. Um, but I like to be aware that anyone who is an owner of a team can make this change. So even if someone uh, created the team and then added an owner later, which we're going to get into the permissions, uh, an owner can change this. So you, even if you don't have the ability to create a team, I think it's important that you, especially if you're an owner of a team, uh, understand this nuance and know that you don't inadvertently or accidentally change the team type, which might not be what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, so then this also segues into, well, how 
uh, what are the different types of permissions within a team. So I'm going to go to the same breadcrumbs. Instead, instead of clicking edit team this time, I'm actually going to go up and hit manage team. And this will give me visibility to the team owners and members. Uh, and there's no guests in this team, but I'll illustrate another team that has guests. Um, when you are a team owner, uh, the things which uh, my, my, uh, I am in this example, uh, you see extra tabs here at the, at the top, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but when you're an owner, you also have the ability to add people, especially if it's a private team, which this is. Uh, as an owner, you have the ability to uh, add members to that team. The other thing that an owner has the ability to do is I can take a member and I can promote them to an owner, um, or I can take an owner and demote them to a member. So that's one of the things, if you're an owner, these are some of the things you can do uh, that members cannot do. Uh, the other type of permission is a member, uh, and uh, is, is these folks down here are all members of the team. Uh, the other thing that an owner can do is choose what members can do. Uh, that is done by the settings tab. I'm going to illustrate that here. Uh, there is a little drop down called member permissions. Again, if you're not an owner of a team, you won't even see the settings tab. So you'll only be able to make this change or even see that it's even available to make this change if you are an owner. Uh, so if I hit the drop down on member permissions, uh, by default, and I, this is something that uh, I really strongly encourage you all to check out if you've never looked at this before, especially if you're an owner of a team, because by default, Microsoft has all of these boxes checked. Uh, fundamentally, I disagree with that. We disagree with that because if I'm an owner of this team and I'm responsible for its structure, its communication, and et cetera, uh, I don't want uh, anyone creating extra channels. I don't want anyone creating uh, private channels. See our session that we talked about with private channels that goes into greater depth on that. Um, I don't want anyone to uh, be able to re delete or restore, remove apps, upload custom apps, do all these things. I typically recommend to only have all of these unchecked except for the very bottom one, which allows people to edit their message. Uh, you as an owner get to choose this. Again, by default, Microsoft ha has all of these turned on. Uh, one of the reasons why I like turning these, uh, these off is because as an owner of the team, if you, do not, if you have these selected, members of your team could create structure and an area of collaboration where you don't have access. And so you as an owner of the team wouldn't even be aware that that even exists. Uh, fundamentally, I feel like if you're an owner of the team, you're ultimately accountable for uh, what goes on on that team. And uh, I would want to make sure that I had visibility to that. Um, as well as this doesn't mean that you can't invite collaboration to make these changes. So if your team members come to you and say, hey, I'd like to be able to do something, uh, you're inviting that collaboration to make sure it's the right fit for your team, as opposed to everyone in your organization or everyone on that team choosing and making that decision. Uh, that's my personal opinion um, that I found, but a lot of organizations uh, agree with that and, and make some adjustments here. Okay, so understanding uh, these are the different members. Uh, the third membership, which I haven't shared yet, is uh, which is not illustrated on this team, uh, is, is guests. So I'm going to go to a board of directors. I'm going to click on the breadcrumbs here and hit manage team because this will illustrate I've, I've added uh, guests uh, and you will see that these folks are guests uh, by the fact that it has guest next to their name. Uh, and guest implies outside of your organization. So um, uh, first and foremost, in order to have a team with uh, guest access, uh, typically a global admin needs to be able to allow that team to have guest access. Once that permission has been created, then an owner can add uh, a team member, uh, an, external, uh, an external guest to the team. Uh, there are ways to restrict it, so you can say only uh, external members from this domain uh, can, can join the team. So there's different levels of restrictions there. But in general, you notice that as an owner, I can change the members' uh, permissions with this little drop down, but I can't uh, change the guest. I don't have the drop down ability to change the guest. So the guest has limited capability depending on the, what the global admin has set as far as ability to collaborate on files, uh, et cetera. Typically, a uh, guest cannot add tabs. They, they, there's things that the guest cannot do uh, other than participate in uh, team meetings and post conversations as well as documents. Again, see other sessions on those topics. Um, the other thing that I uh, forgot to mention that an owner can do is an owner also can remove uh, people from a team by clicking this little X over here. It makes it really easy to do that. Uh, the one little caveat that I also like to note is that uh, if you want to, let's say I wanted to remove Gerald from this team, I would first have to demote Gerald to a member and then remove Gerald from the team. So just a couple steps, uh, either which an owner has the capability to do. 
so uh, look, Microsoft has made delegation of these types of teams and these permissions um, really easy, which is great. Uh, I actually love that Microsoft has delegated this, so it doesn't have to be any little change, doesn't have to go to the IT team to request it or have it done. However, uh, what this means is that anyone who does have the ability to create a team uh, and or anyone who is an owner of a team uh, needs to understand that with great power comes great responsibility. We hope this MyTech brief on teams, types, and permissions will help you ensure appropriate access to organizational resources and make it easier to drive adoption in teams. If you like this MyTech Brief, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for future MyTech Brief sessions. And check out MyTech.com for everything else we do to make IT easy for our clients. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you again soon. Until then, be productive and stay secure.